Well, welcome to day two of pre-staking, guys. Uh, a little slow this morning. Um, just not really feeling feeling great. Uh, plus, I'm not gonna lie, back and arms are a little little sore from yesterday. We didn't get a lot out, but slinging a hammer for everything sucked. Uh, we got about two inches of rain last night, which really changed the ground. Um, we've been going for a little bit this morning, and things are definitely easier. But all right, so this is one. Uh, one location that we've got kind of two trails here. You can tell where this comes out, right next to the tree, comes up. Uh, but the main one, that's the indentation of the road here, is right down through here. Awesome trail. Uh, this is where we're gonna throw our 220 on this side. The other side of the road, these two trails converge onto one trail. Um, makes it a lot easier to, uh, to set up over there like so. But, we're gonna find a good spot down here um this type of location i won't walk down the trail um i just don't like to it's kind of tall open grass in here so it's gonna be kind of tough to to 220 them but we'll make it work there's enough grass here when i throw some blocking grass on it's not gonna it's not gonna deter them at all Ooh, I do want to get off of the rock though. There we go. Anchor it up high and off to the side. Ah. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Coming right down through here, uh, right over some kind of melted engine part. <laughs> but you find all kinds of things in the ditches, guys. <laughs> Wow, you guys remember this spot? I got the hot wire fence here. Um, but this trail is just <laughs> pretty remarkable. And we took a lot of coon off this last year, a lot of coon. But let's get some stuff, get it, get it set up. Two dog proofs, two pogos driver and of course you guys they're coming over the road a little bit but most of them are coming right through this tube I just got to make sure they can't reach that fence uh, no matter what so I'll stake a little bit on this side of the trail that's coming through here um, that way where the trail is is about as far ahead of me as they can go just like so Can't reach the fence from here, so we're good. Perfect. And we're out of here. All right, guys, we're at one of my favorite locations. Uh, probably one of the first places that I caught double digit coon in a year on. It's hard to tell, but just this little golden patch here. Um, that's the trail. Uh, I don't look like much. But it just, I don't know why it is. I don't know if there's so much traffic over it, keeps the dust off, I'm not sure. But one other thing I wanna point out while I'm here. So we got that rain last night. Look at all this grass that's knocked down. Going forward, every time we get wind, we get rain, snow especially, it's gonna start knocking down all this vegetation. Now, if this was a spot where I was capable of having a 220, um, I think it was a little too open to have 220 here to begin with, but um, you know, say say over in here, uh, the grass was just like this. You know, if we had a nice funnel through here, it'd be an awesome 220 spot. But as we get more and more veg or, uh, precipitation and wind, it looks more like this. Now your 220 locations are really hard to get in. Um, you know, you, it's possible on a lot of them, but you're really having to work at it. 
versus this where it's easy um, you know you just set the 220 right in the middle of the trail you know you got all that natural walking but when you start getting into this stuff the trail's not as defined and they're not necessarily using just the trail if you look back over here you know look at kind of how wide that area is i mean there's spots that are 14 16 inches wide where the trail as you call it is moving they're moving through here but there's nothing keeping them exactly on one four inch wide path uh hence why it'd be tough to to you know run any 220s on stuff like this if we came up in here um if the grass was taller possibly um but again you know they have everywhere to roam out here versus that grass early when it's it's standing upright so 220s um outside of using boxes or buckets just natural trails i want to do them as soon as i can as early as i can every year because mother nature is going to break down the trail opportunities for the that maximize my 220 efficiency um, you know it's just it's one of those things I use more and more dog proofs as it gets you know mid-season and once all the grass gets knocked down it's a lot harder to find those 220 locations so uh, anyway just thought I'd stop and reach out to that we're just about at a hundred locations now total um, so about <laughs> yeah two thirteenths of the way done <laughs> we got a long ways to go yet fellas we still got quite a bit of standing crops out here. I'm kind of surprised um, with that rain we got. They'll stay out of the fields here for probably at least three or four days. Uh, really nice trail going up here to, to standing corn. Um, we even got a, a footprint that's not, not coon. Almost looks like coyotes, which may explain something go back over here on the other side of the road we got kind of a unique spot um, you know we pick the trail up goes down through here with my dog proof that I just put in but we got a den not sure what it is we've got a den of something something big anybody home uh, kind of cool um, this little sticks allowed me to do that. That's kind of neat, but um, very easily could be a coyote den or a fox den or something down in there. But set a dog proof on it. Uh, we got a house. Well, you can see the mailbox right here, about 105, 110 yards away. So set a pair of dog roofs on each side and hope for the best. Man, do I love the area that I trap in? <laughs> I'm pretty lucky, guys. It you'll not find much of a better coon population um, outside of probably 80 90 miles of me it's probably some of the best in the country um, that's why I'm able to do what I'm able to do guys but this trail is just phenomenal uh, the last one where I just showed you with the den of some kind was right there at the bend of that road maybe a hundred hundred yards uh, we're over a hundred locations right now in 30 miles 32 miles you know so three per mile every 500 yards or so we're stopping on average that's pretty good <laughs> that's pretty good so I'll take that all day long but we got dog proof down the bottom here by the tube one up there on the side hill something I do want to talk about this is probably the steepest of an angle you'll find me setting dog proofs on uh, just because they can get so much momentum running downhill and they can pull out of those dog proofs pretty easy uh, i do try if i do set on something this steep i'm trying to short chain them as much as i can i'll drive that pogo down deep try to get some of the chain down in there too uh, leave them with only about a, a six or an eight inch leash if you call it um, so they can't get that momentum running downhill you can catch a nice 22 25 pound coon hitting the end of something solid you know they're hitting that with a lot of a lot of power uh, if you ever have steep banks like this and you have a dog proof laying empty on the bottom bottom side that's probably what happened you know they started on top and took off sprinting to the bottom and just popped right out uh, I think it happens more than people think I know I've had it happen quite a bit until I started learning what was causing it and I minimize it best I can now but great location guys great location we got another great I mean absolutely great 220 location here guys uh, as you can see 
right all the way down great spot for 220 uh, we got a setup right over here anchored over here as well and it, it's all running downhill like so and back so he gets caught here gravity's gonna take him down and around he should be hanging out right there by that tree keeping this trail open uh, the other side you know it wasn't as boxed in um, you can see the trail coming across right here uh, pretty wide open too dog proof down in there but a great location great location uh, it's a good day out guys it's about 43 degrees 44 degrees with probably about a 10 mile an hour wind perfect conditions for me to be in a hoodie not be sweating not be getting cold uh, not dealing with gravel dust um, my tracks in the road are hard to see um, everything kind of settled so you can't really see me pulling over as much um, it's a good day we got hit today as hard as we can because it's it's a really good day uh, hopefully my magic number I want to get to is 240 done by today it's a pretty far stretch but we're we're killing time now so time to get moving you know it's just out of complete randomness uh, I decided to stop this little fence line crossing the road. I've never seen a coon trail here. I mean, there's a couple of what look like little faint trails coming through, um, but they're kind of a little bit everywhere. And we got that rain last night, and this is what I find. We got coyote tracks going right straight down this little wash. It kind of goes into, you know, right in here, there's no trail really. But just this little low spot right here, we're going to throw a snare in. Uh, you know, it's a good location for a coyote. A lot of things coming down to this little timber. Um, but, you know, we're going past here anyway. Why not, right? All right. So you got this nice little fence line here. Uh, behind me, it's just a timber, small timber. And this trail doesn't really look like much, you know. You can see it through here going up. And it doesn't look that great. But you can tell they're using it. I mean, that's just from last night, at least two animals coming through here, um, maybe even three. So uh, these small little subtle ones, you know, I've trapped this for years and, and I know it's nothing great, but it's generally something I will catch two, maybe three coon on. And so let's go right past it. It's not a, it's not hard to get to, you know, it's two steps down, two steps up and we're right where I need to be. So uh, I'll always set these little things like this um you know as long as there's some sign there uh if this was way down deep in a deep ditch it's not worth the energy um to do it in my opinion but for stuff like this yeah i'll, I'll set these all day long all right so it's hard to tell but if any of you guys remember last year i had one 220 trail that was just phenomenal. Uh, we went like six or seven days in a row with the catch. Um, this is it. This is that trail. And it's very discreet, very, very subtle, but it's dynamite. Uh, let's see if we can't get up, get you up in, in there. I'm not sure what that looks like, but that's it guys. Just coming out. Um, real subtle coming across the other side. Uh, that's going up right in through here um, Going down wrapping around but well, this side's open. Uh, this side's kind of more exposed to the elements knocking grass down That's why I said on the other side good spot for 220 very discreet out of sight. I like it. Oh Man, I love this trail uh, You can see all kinds of prints uh, Just from last night where they came up through here um just a dynamite dynamite trail we'll stick our 220 probably right there between that shrub and the other shrub uh, maybe even right down in here but 220 set up there she's anchored all the way over here so just like i have been doing gonna get caught here swing down and it's gonna be laying right here in the bottom of the ditch when we get here keep this trail active man that's cool i love that trail all right so it seems to be the, the topic of the day is these subtle trails uh, i don't know how well you guys will be able to tell but right through here going up underneath that branch to that tree 
Um, I've actually picked up a Bobcat here three years ago. I got 220 off the side here. Um, sorry about the wind, guys. It's pretty bad out here, but on the other side of the road, this is kind of the same thing. Just a really subtle trail going down through and up and into here. So, not much, guys. Just real easy trails. Whew, I'm feeling it today, guys. But we're getting some stuff out. Uh, one trail I want to stop show you, mostly so I can catch my breath. But a really nice timber to timber location. Uh, really mature kind of pasture uh, timber. But this trail, this is one of those good ones. This is one of those ones we're looking for. Uh, it does seem like I always catch, you know, I'll probably catch six or eight off this one. It winds all the way back. Kind of goes down there by the concrete. Uh, but just a phenomenal trail. Uh, I just can't get enough of these things, guys. It's something about a a really, really nice raccoon trail. Just, it's awesome. Uh, trail is so good. I need to pack like 30 of these every day. I forgot I stopped at McDonald's yesterday morning. Iowa Trapper for the win. I know guys, broken record, but we got corn, we got a draw. Uh, really, really nice trail going down through it all too. I mean, that is mud. That's good. But all that vegetation crap over there. We go to the other side, which has a nice big draw, wood a draw, and we've laced it with a couple dog proofs. Uh, a little easier to get to, not as steep. Um, so we got this little kind of buffer strip here to keep them kind of out of sight. But always do pretty good here. It's normally a, a five, six coon location. With it being corn on the other side, I don't expect anything less this year. So we're trucking along, guys. thing I've ever seen. There's nothing here for a beaver. Repetition, repetition, guys. Cornfield up there. Low spot, bottom of a hill. Phenomenal coon trail. Over and over and over again. That's how I do my line, guys. Uh, we're not pre-staking anything in the water right now because I don't know what's going to happen with rain and whatnot in the future, but. Right now, anyway, uh, we're just doing my, which is 95% of my line is my dry stuff um, on these culverts, the high points, the low points. Uh, right up here on the tree on the right, right there, I've got a 220 um, where they're coming down that fence line that you can vaguely see behind this fence line that goes down along. But just hammer as many locations as we can today, guys. 
hard to kind of tell but right there nice trail again coming right up going to corn i actually thought i double marked my last location because we were right there <laughs> um literally about 15 yards away uh good little spot here guys um nothing crazy but definitely definitely worth a couple of dog proofs in here soft day we've only had to actually hammer in like four locations so one thing I like about these pogos they hold really really well so even if I'm only getting these in 10 12 inches of dry ground I know they ain't going anywhere I'll set them up so I can find them and we're out of here all right, trying to get a whole different area again. Uh, there's a trail going underneath this, this cedar tree up to a cornfield up there. And over here, we just got this cedar fence line coming up. Uh, instead of coming, you know, somewhere through this gate, they are coming down and wrapping around and going right down the actual evergreen fence line. So we threw a dog proof in there. Probably don't have room for two in case the farmer does use this gate, which it actually does kind of look like they do so uh it's about three o'clock we're on stop 160. uh i'm hurting i'll tell you what the uh the truck's starting to empty out a little bit um especially the 220s for sure but uh we came out here with 300 dog proofs now but we're down to about 120 left give or take in here uh had 100 220s i brought with me and um, I know I got 30 in those buckets, so we're probably down to about 40 of them, give or take. So, making headway, guys. Wow. <laughs> what a trail, guys. Starting to get late now. Uh, starting to feel myself wearing out, too. Uh, this is stop 184, I believe. Um, same thing we've been doing, guys. Corn, timber, over and over and over again. And see my 220 placed right in there trail cuts right next to that old post also comes down from over the top which you know they've been coming down this quite a bit too i could probably put another 220 right here actually if i wanted to but i don't be pretty short on 220s for this route so gonna keep moving guys gonna go till dark hopefully or until i completely run out of steam but gotta keep pushing gotta keep driving guys <laughs> 